Hey, you just found the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast on YouTube. This is Mind Pump. Okay, today's giveaway is awesome. Here's how you can enter to win a free MAPS Aesthetic Workout Program. Free program if you do the following and we pick you. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours we drop this episode underneath. Tell us something good. Tell us a fitness story. We'll pick your comment. If we pick your comment, you'll win free access to MAPS Aesthetic. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications because we give away stuff all the time. You're going to want to know when we post these episodes so you can get in in the first 24 hours and maybe win some cool stuff. One more thing before we start the podcast, we are running a promotion on two workout programs and one workout program bundle. The first workout program on sale is MAPS HIT. That's high intensity interval training. The second program that's on sale is MAPS SPLIT. This is a body part split bodybuilding routine. And then the bundle that's on sale is the bikini bundle, which is multiple programs put together. All of them 50% off. Just go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code SPRINGBREAK for the discount. All right, enjoy the podcast. When piercings and tattoos started to become kind of pop, because for a while there, the only people who had tattoos were like bikers and like yeah. sailors. And piercings were not a thing unless you were. Was it nine? Was it nineties? I would say. Yeah, and I had a, there was this guy, this, this buddy I had, and he was like, you know, he was kind of up and up and up with whatever's cool, whatever. And so the tattoos became a thing. So he got, and then piercings became a thing. But this is before certain tattoos and certain piercings became stigmatized. Yeah, like the, oh, this is what girls get, and this is what guys yeah. get. Yeah, yeah. So he got a tattoo around his belly button. No. And he got a belly button piercing. Yes. Do I know your friend? It was it his son. Dang, we know the same guy. Come on, man. <laughs> I remember a guy that had a son and then had his belly button pierced on yeah. top of that, and I was just like, you know, what the, led to this decision? It was I, cool I, before. I work with that dude. Are you sure? Are we all talking about the same I guy? Like we have we to be talking the same guy. White guy? Casey? Nah, I don't want to say it. Thanks, Adam. Well, come on. There's a million Casey's out there. <laughs> Not with a son tattoo on his Is that who it is? I maybe. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> he, if it's the same guy, he lived with me for right. a while. I knew a guy that had a tribal tattoo in his lower back, and it was just shook my head. That's like, what I'm saying. Because why would you do that? It, because it was before we realized or we thought, oh, this is what you yeah. know, women get this, guys get this. It was just, oh, I'm going to get one. That sounds cool. But that one, you know, like it just seems like, okay, who's really going to benefit from this? The yeah. one in your low back? Yeah. <laughs> like, who are you displaying this for? Yeah. Like, come on, guy. You didn't think about this? Yeah. I mean, that was obvious. I have one in my upper back. That's yeah. different, though. Okay. <laughs> that's for when you give me shoulder rubs. All right. Yeah. Uh, yes, right. I do appreciate that, that you have that there. Yeah. If I have to go to work. You know? I wonder if it's the same person. We work together at Hillsdale. We, of course, the same. We all worked in the gyms, dude. Yeah, but yeah. you didn't. Ever, you never worked with him, did you? I don't. I don't think I. He worked. lived with me, so no. like I, I. So we. Of course, he lived with you. And I don't yeah. feel. Shut up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I didn't know him very well. He, we were at, we were uh, both managing she that cool club. Guy? Yeah. He did seem like a cool guy at first, you know what I'm saying? But I got no problem throwing him on the bus. Dude was doing coke in my house. So oh, is that nice. guy? Yeah. <laughs> bro, you're calling him out so Fuck, hard. yeah, dude. I don't give a shit. I'm uh, still angry, bro. He bounced uh, on last month of rent. I had razor blade marks all over my window seal. No, no. Yeah, a little short straw. I didn't even know, dude. So this that was like you one of my- thought he was energetic? I wasn't- yeah. <laughs> No, you know. So the the way it all unfolded. Man, he's really good with his diet, yeah. and he's always energetic. Yeah. I don't you just understand. gotta put a vacuum well, in front of him. Up, <laughs> it, up into that point, okay. He was really my first experience with knowing somebody that was like a like a coke head. Like I'd been at parties and seen coke and been around coke, but not like this. Not like in my house. Like he just does it before work. No, yeah. So we worked wow. together. We carpooled every morning. And I used to trip out because I, you know, you, I've talked on the show before about like how often I get up and go to the restroom, right? So I get up in the middle of the night. This dude at like three o'clock in the morning, he used to have one of those uh, Costco lazy boy like fold out camping chairs. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he'd have it set up in the middle of the living room. You have the, the video game control at 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Just playing yeah. video games. Playing video games. And then I'm up at six to start my day and stuff like that. We get in the car at 7 30 or like that, head off to work and yeah. I, every night. And I'd be like, dude, now were you now were you thinking get his energy? Now yeah, knowing you and you're such a hard worker and all stuff, were you thinking to yourself, like, God, I gotta keep up? Yes, hell? yes. <laughs> What's he doing? I gotta yes. be able to do this. I was competitive like that. Oh, and I was wow. so I was still so young that I was naive. I was naive to like what was really going on. Like I didn't <laughs> yeah. and you know, looking back now, like all the 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 signs like it seem obvious like of course i'm i'm telling you that he was a cokehead and then sharing that it's like duh adam but it's like you when you're 20 something years old and you're young i like, can some guys have more energy than other guys like this i just figured this dude has got on another level where he would you know play video games all night still get up at six and then grind at work yeah. and i was just impressed you know yeah, so do it. but it was you know what really gave it away 
I started uh, Google researching what uh, um, really chronic bad breath came from because this dude used to get in my car. And when he in the morning, right? So we just yeah, the, oh, the we just breath. we just brushed our Ooh. teeth, you know. Like, and I remember, like, you guys brush your teeth together? No, oh, okay. <laughs> I, mean, I had a, a tiny little condo, dude. Oh, okay. It was a tiny little. <laughs> the way you said it, it sounded like you guys right. in front of the mirror together. Well, no, but so yeah. this was consistently <laughs> the bottom now. This you was consistently lotion, happening. Listen, Linda, this was consistent. <laughs> this was consistently happening so much that I would go like watch him. Like I wanted it. Like, dude, his breath is so bad. Like, oh, is yeah. he not brushing his teeth right? So I'd like, Bro, come, you are fucking this guy Man. up on the podcast. <laughs> He's got halitosis. He's a co-tank. I don't care, dude. He fucked me, bro. He fucked me over. He's He's, back. You've been waiting for years for yeah. like, I'm going to get him back one day. I'm not going to say his last name. You know what I'm saying? I think oh. he, he just has a sun tattoo on his belly button. So I'm sure there's a million of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it is. Belly button Jose, pierce. You know, yeah, we're yeah. going to narrow it down. Yeah, yeah. White yeah. guy. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, back to the uh, piercing conversation. Uh, I did have, like, I, and I brought this up a long, long time ago on the podcast, but there was a guy that had three nipples, right? That I lived with. No. Oh, yeah. I mentioned this and you know, it's so it's, I honestly, I thought I'm like, wow, this guy was just like all open about it and was just ready to show you. Not only that, he pierced just that nipple. <laughs> Like, I mean, I and it just would do. dangle. So I would do that. Like, right? I would 100% that's the move. do that. That yeah. is the move. Now, was yeah. it sensitive like the other nipples? Uh, apparently. <laughs> I mean, I didn't touch her nothing. Like, I, just, <laughs> I, I just stayed away from Don't that. Don't lie. But, but <laughs> I, was, I was curious. You know what? what all, it always uh, bothers me about any piercing is yeah. that I always think to myself, like, if you get in a scuffle, Ooh. that shit's coming oh, out, It's ripping dude. off, yeah. Ear, whether you have, because I know you had hoops, 100%. Er, Adam, 100%. <laughs> Yeah. You had hoops in you your ears. You got long hair or earrings. It's I'm not ripping sure. Hey, first of all, it's not plural. For sure. It's not plural. I didn't have two. I didn't have both my ears pierced. So I pierced my ears way more a- anything, ear. Let me put this way. Anything that would supposedly get more girls. The side that's you had. still straight, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, 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 it was like a d- definitive Bro, there size. Was, hey, there was a time when a small hoop earring and a hemp necklace was fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time. Okay? Yeah, I ain't doing it still. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. But there was a time. I don't care. If you're if you're close to when our age. Frat boys rule the world. There was a time when that shit was cool so I, absolutely yeah. i rocked it for the the time maybe hey, a little ladies. maybe a little longer than i should have but i you know <laughs> yeah. i caught the message hey ladies you had yeah. eyeliner on too <laughs> no no oh, no you didn't go that far no, i was that was uh, those emo kids i was never like i never did the all black you know all black clothes black eyeliner type of well, i'll uh, tell you what dude those don't, were, those don't knock the, the eyeliner because when for halloween when you're I dressed up as I a mean, vampire Chris angel pulls it off i'll tell you what i dressed up as a vampire and i dyed my remember when you i dyed are my the hair? Mo- you are the most likely to wear eyeliner okay, oh, well yeah. i mean yeah. i mean my eyes naturally if you look in the camera you can see yeah. it kind of looks like it anyway but i had dark I, I i i dyed my hair black jet black my beard jet black and then I did the eyeliner thing, you know? Mm. And Jessica, she couldn't keep her hands off me. I was yeah. like, oh, really? Wow. I'm going to have to save this one. Uh, yeah. yeah, see, I could see you doing that. Yeah. So, sure. yeah, so there was another guy which uh, <laughs> who had a certain, like, so he had testicular cancer, right? And I've, I've talked oh, about this one, one before. One ball pat. One ball pat, right? Yeah. So his move. <laughs> that was his name. His yeah. move was to get one of those bars that, like, go, you know, through the base of your, of your schlong. Wow. Like Prince and, Albert? Yeah, but it was like a bar that, like, was underneath your shaft. If Under, like, underneath? Like this, right like, here. <laughs> right? Like part of his so scrotum? The, the, the thing was, it would like, you know, it would like rub up and down on the girl and it was like a thing. Andrew, you have to put a cock in just But I'm just right saying, <laughs> <laughs> like a carrot or something, so it's not so obvious. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like that, I was just like, how he do you not worry so well. every time that? that it's going to rip off? Oh, do you know what uh, I mean? Yes. Like, I just, these decisions. Yeah. And what happens when they, I mean, obviously there's some science there because what if you go in and you hit the wrong thing and the pee comes out the side? You know what Ooh, I mean? Ooh, yeah. There's that uh, potential. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. It's gonna, a bunch yeah. of cra- hey, speaking of crazy, crazy. stuff. Crazy. I'm going to read some uh, some news headlines from Florida <laughs> for you guys right now. <laughs> oh, that'll yeah. fit right in with Do this bro, conversation. Bro, this is great. I found this website, Florida Daily, and it's uh, Weird Florida News. So you just these are just headlines. I'm just going to read the headlines to you. Okay. First one, Florida woman who reportedly stabbed her sister with an EpiPen said it was because she's allergic to drunks. So that's why she stabbed her what? sister. <laughs> what? Here, yeah, here's another one. <laughs> Florida man pleads guilty for using COVID loan for a Lamborghini. That's another one right there. <laughs> yeah, he feels real guilty. <laughs> man steals rings from one Florida girlfriend to propose 
to his other girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's a romantic. One more, one more. Florida man on lawnmower hits cop car, gets arrested for a DUI. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be like. What's the deal with Florida? Uh, okay, that's got to be like a, 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 parked, a parked cop car and a drunk ass dude yeah. just ran into it, right? That's the guys, only way that happens. Yeah. Did you guys see that video where it was like this? It, it, it looked like spring break, but there was like a guy in the cop car and then everybody's gathered around and all of a sudden he, somehow the door opens and he runs and he runs and he's, and he's like handcuffed, handcuffed yeah. and everything. He just runs away. Like, you, like, what are you doing? Would you guys hear what happened in Florida right now? Right. Cause of spring break. Yeah. They put a curfew on him. Right? It went, you know why people were going nuts. There was like brawls and people not paying their bills at restaurants. I saw videos of people running Dude. after they ate and then getting chased down by, by bunch waiters. Of, bunch of pent up like uh, teenage like angst. Huh? Just going nuts over there. So they had to like crack down on it. So I thought that I thought the governor already came out and said they Florida sp specifically said that we would not do any more COVID lockdown, shut down anything. Well, no, this is not for COVID. This is because people were acting crazy. Just, yeah. I know. Just breaking Managing shit and, chaos. And, and stealing stuff. Wow. So uh, did they get it? I mean, did they get it wrangled in or what? What happened? What I have no it? idea. Oh, you guys don't know what happened. No, I have no. Have you guys ever been to? Uh, have you guys have been to Florida? Have you been to Miami? You guys ever been to Miami? Not Miami. Uh, yeah, I've been to Miami once. Yeah. yeah. A, lot, a lot of the guys that I played ball with, like, were from there, and so <laughs> yeah, I went one time on a spring break, and it was pretty pretty crazy. I was gonna say because I didn't go on spring break, yeah. but I went in, in 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 a normal time or whatever, and it looked it, it was insane. I was People like, lose their mind. Yeah, I couldn't imagine if. What it would be like during spring? Could that not wait, Adam, for the after the podcast? What are you, what are you, what are you, what are you doing right now? Well, he's we, he's worried about how you know pretty he is. Uh, well, I mean, we have we have a Caldera commercial, anyways. I figured if I'm going to talk about it today, I better make sure it's for oh actually. My. They can see the before and after. Look at this. Watch. Look at yeah. this glow. Look, this face <laughs> right now. look how after. nice that looks. It does. My skin always and feels shine. amazing after I do it. Yeah, yeah. look at that. That's yeah. really, does it really work good. on the beard too? Because I feel like yes. some of that carries over. No, it's, I, I don't use a beard oil because I just rub it all in that whether I'm supposed to or not. You know what? So here's a, yeah. remember. You guys remember that article I brought up about sperm counts dropping, testosterone dropping, penis sizes do you know, I? shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember that? Okay. Yeah. So, th so there's a natural product right there, Caldera. Doesn't have those chemicals and shit that a lot of these lotions have that you rub on your skin to shrink your dick. Right. That. <laughs> Wow. Will not shrink Ooh, your dick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, next time I talk to Caldera, I'm going to ask if they want to do a commercial like that. <laughs> yeah. The uh, face serum that won't shrink your dick. Yeah. Caldera. Yeah. It's a great tagline. Nice yeah. skin. <laughs> dick the same. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Keep it, keep it what it is. But I'm serious. It's all natural stuff. If you look at the ingredients, they're all natural oil. Yeah, it's no, not I, a bunch of crazy stuff. I love stuff. it. And so far, we've got, we've got great feedback from yeah. our audience. So I have a, a weird transition from that topic that I came across. I think I tagged you guys or maybe I sent to the group thread. None of you responded, um, maybe because it was a weekend and you guys weren't working. Uh, we're not uh, ignoring you. Yeah, yes, yeah, see, you guys are like that. I so. block you on the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> on the weekend, I was like, yeah. Justin, no, screw you. I text you all the time. I'll, your shit I'll, ignores I'll me back. all the time. Well, I do it on purpose, though, to you. So Fuck I, off. I, I, are you really? Yeah, of course I do. What a dickhead. Because you never respond to mine or read anything I tell you to read. That's why. Oh, my God. So this so is I, true. I, I just, so it is. Is it true? It's true. So it's intentional. So it's totally childish of me, but I do that on purpose. All right, all right. I'll try responding. Justin is the best at shutting down, right? So once he's decided, I know he's he makes, he makes he obviously has. I did that from the very beginning, though. It's not like personal. Yeah, right. So I don't, I don't, exactly. Be a man. Yeah. yeah. Be a man. <laughs> Be a man. Yeah. Throw yeah. your phone away yeah. at night. Yeah. yeah. Don't talk about feelings. No, he does. So he does that well. Doug, I can always count out to count on being neurotic like me. It could be it could be one o'clock on a Sunday night. I can send a text message to Doug and there's a a 50 50 shot he'll respond he just right doesn't back. want you to, he wants he doesn't want you to feel bad that's why he's like <laughs> yeah. god nobody responded yeah <laughs> i'll thumbs this <laughs> up dumb. i'll put a thumbs up so what did you put out there oh so i said yeah. so i sent you guys this i found i saw it on um uh what's the uh, the, the the carnivore doctor that is sean baker yeah, yeah. on his page mm -hmm. uh he posted it i think oh, just I last this. week did you see oh this i did god. the okay it's a show in australia right no it's not australia it's the, yeah it's australia yeah, i did watch no, it's the netherlands Oh, it is. Yeah, I, think I thought it was Australia. No, I think it's the no, Netherlands. Maybe we can look it up. You know, you know. I, I did look at it. You know, it's I'm, not I'm, Australia. You know, I did I'm look at geographically it. Geographically challenged, right? So, <laughs> it's somewhere not here, right? But there, <laughs> watch it's, it's not America. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not America. Which I don't know though. Australia, scares me that Australia, America's next to do some shit like this. Mm. They have this show, and the the idea is to normalize body types, and so their idea is. Bring out a bunch of, of people, all ages, from like 30 to looks like 70 years old, men and women, naked. 
in front of an audience of nothing but children, adults yeah. exposing themselves in front of children, and then the and then the kids ask all these questions. So I did read about what this. What the fuck? So I did read about this, and what they wanted to do is they wanted to normalize different bodies. They want to. They said it's not sexualized. So what they do is they bring the bodies out, and then the kids can ask questions, and it's old people, young people, men, women. Now here's the deal. I get. I totally get the the sentiment. But here's what you don't do if you want to normalize nudity with kids. You don't put them on a show in an yeah. audience and then parade naked people in front of them and then say, look. Yeah, yeah. because that doesn't and happen in real life. Reaction. Exactly. It, it does not happen in real life. No. If you want, if and I get this, by the way. My, my family is comes from Italy. When I went to Italy, especially southern Italy, when I'd go there on vacation and I'd go to the beach, I was always like, oh my gosh, like women don't have tops on, old women don't have tops on, old guys wearing speedos, like yeah. but nobody said anything to me. It wasn't a big deal. You just go right. just the way it is. And so it did, it did to me normalize different bodies. But I couldn't imagine if I was a kid and they said, Okay, here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna sit right here and we're gonna walk adults yeah. out and they're gonna disrobe in front yeah. of you. We're gonna parade them in front of you. Totally, totally. It, it, they're not accomplishing what they say that they're trying to accomplish. I, so that's why I call bullshit. I think they're just trying to get views because it's crazy. Well, I, Doug mm. pulled the article up. Did it, I did, that was a different article. What did it say? Is it still going? Is it or did it get shut down? I know there was a petition to try and shut it down. I don't think there was enough. Find out the country it's in too, because I believe the <laughs> it, the Netherlands is. Uh, it's a da Danish show. Danish. Okay, mm -hmm. they're very progressive when it comes to nudity, for sure. Nudity is not a big... Most countries are less prude. Which is uh, ironic, then. Them, of all people, need this. Like, to your point, they probably the kids probably are more likely to see a nude beach there than they are here. Which, by the way, even here in the United States, you can all over California, you can find you them. You can, but we yeah. are definitely more prudish here about nudity. For example, you know, even women breastfeeding here can become a big deal. Mm -hmm. In other countries, it's like, whatever. Right. I get all that. Like, I think nudity is not a big deal unless it's sexualized or unless it's paraded and treated like entertainment. This is totally. Yeah. This is not what they it's say the that they're message. trying to. Do. Yeah. Come on, dude. Yeah. You gonna put a bunch of kids in an audience? Imagine yeah. if you're one of those kids. Like, yeah, I'm on a TV show. Weird. Yeah. Here's a dick. I just thought Whoa. it was weird. Such a weird way to to normalize that. Like, I mean, I feel like that's the responsibility of the parents, right? Like, if you feel the need to do that, like, I, I again, I like you, Sal. I get the sentiment. Well, I get here, that. here's the real question I have. Okay, forget the kids for a second. Although that's the most important thing. Who are these adults? Yeah, that want to do that. Yeah, hey, we're going to have you sign up for this show, yeah. and you're going to walk in front of kids. You're and backstage like, yeah, here we go. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah, I can't yeah. wait to teach kids like, about bodies. What the hell? Yeah, yeah. What is going on? Yeah. No, the way you do it with kids is you just make it not a big deal. Yeah. That's all. Not, you just make it not a big deal. Not that you go and make a big deal about yeah, it. Yeah, one of the guys just like starts doing puppets. You know? <laughs> like, come on. Come on, it's not that kind of show. Like, oh, yeah, I thought I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> I do want to see the questions the kids ask, though, right? Yeah. How come that old guy's uh, balls are so I did too. So, you know, that's why it'll get, it's going right. to get views. Because there's there was a part of me that I'm like, what are these kids asking these guys? Yeah. You know what are what are, what are they promoting? What are they getting them to ask them? And like I, I, that part of me is wants to tune in and watch it mm. for that exact reason because I want to know what exactly they're teaching these kids right now. So I don't know. Weird. I saw yeah. it. And I thought I couldn't believe it at first. I thought yeah. it was so weird. Crazy stuff. All right. Here's some more cool stuff. So this is how you know shit's crazy and and the world's nuts because news like this comes out and it's not the front page of everything. All, all the time. It's not the front page of everything. In fact, when I bring this up, you guys are probably gonna be like, huh? I didn't even know that. Hmm. So trip off this, right? So UFOs is becoming a huge thing. Oh, here we go. Well, no, this is a big deal. Former high-level officials and scientists with deep black experience who have always remained in the shadows now just came forward on one platform saying, oh yeah, UFOs are the real deal. This, this just came out. Mark Rubio, the, the politician, said, yeah, there's UFOs flying. This is his quote. There are UFOs flying over U.S. military bases, and the government has no clue what they are. Dude. So they're literally coming out in the government we're, saying officially. We're so exhausted from 2020 that like <laughs> nobody gives a shit. That's what I'm saying. You know, it's like, it's so unfortunate. <laughs> like, dude, why did this come out like 10 years ago and we were like super hyped, you know, about UFOs and aliens? Maybe that was the plan. Maybe I haven't stopped thinking about your guys' theory. I like, I've, I might, future you might have got me to cross over to your conspiracy side. Uh, trying to fix our, future people, man. Future, fix our fertility? Yes. Right. Well, all right. Yeah, but here's the other thing. If they have interstellar, interstellar and, and time travel, well, you can't fix fertility. Come on, yeah. What kind of technology? What, are you well, yeah, and not you're, if you're you pretty bad. Not if it, by the time they're aware of it, they've already evolved to it. Mm. I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know. I think that was a very interesting idea. But may, hey, maybe this is part of the plan. Maybe they, they, this whole time they're like, we need to tell 
of the world that these exist at some point because the aliens are going to they're going to show the world that they're here and we're trying to figure out the right way to tell them. So it's like when you're telling your well, kids like bad news, like when do we tell the kids yeah. that you know that their that grandma so and so is going to die? Like, uh, what, how about when we tell them we're going to Disneyland? Like you're trying to yeah. balance it out. So maybe this is like everything's so crazy. Like now's the time. Well, Nobody's going to freak out. Remember when the first I don't know if it was the rover or whatever went to Mars and then they came back and then they actually found traces of like bacteria. So it was like proof that there was life, but then they dismissed it right away because it was like, oh, well, you know, there's no DNA uh, that they found through this, this type of bacteria. But now they're finding all kinds of like ways they can find DNA in little know. organisms, bacteria. Have they reconciled that yet? Oh, I don't know. I don't know that. Yeah. Well, oh. riddle me this, Justin. Why mm. are they, why are the UFOs hovering over military bases and not going over like Disneyland? Mm. Disneyland's not open, dude. Well, oh, I mean, see, boom. <laughs> actually, I think Disney, it's World, uh, Disney World is open. Uh, Disneyland's open now. Yeah, is it Disneyland open? Only Californians can go, and I believe they have limited capacity. Oh, really? Mistaken. Yeah. Are you are you, you going to take your? They're boy? worried about not like right. nuclear time. war not and stuff, soon. right? That's, that's they always come up when there's like uh, a lot of friction in the world. You think so? Is what uh, this is what the ufologists. Uh, <laughs> So, is yeah. that a real title? That's, it is. Is that really a real Dude, title? Look it up. Yeah, yeah they, they, they've made their own. Yeah, their can own you go to sort school? For can you go to school for that? I don't uh, think so. School of like knowing everything. Yeah, <laughs> like the school of insider information. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. he, Adam has no idea. I, yeah, he just. I don't. Amateur. I, I just don't. head in the sand. I am head yeah. in the sand. Hey, so are you going to take your son to Disneyland soon or what? Um, no, not soon. You know, it's, it's too, fun, dude, with little kids. Yeah, it's still a little early. You know what I'm saying? Like he's he's not even like talking yet. You know what I'm saying? He says like one word, two words, twice. Like that's it. Like he doesn't. He's not at a place where uh, like he's barely at where I can throw him up in the air and that's it makes him giggle and laugh a little bit. Mm, like yeah. we're not at the place where. He'll remember like, that. This is just like Space Mountain. Yeah, eventually, <laughs> eventually I will. I mean, absolutely, I can't wait to take him to that. But I, I'll wait probably, probably I don't know, four, I would think. I don't know. What yeah. do you guys think? You guys are parents? Three, four. Yeah, Yeah. I was going to say. Yeah, uh, wait a little bit. He's he's barely going to turn two, right? He turns two in July, and it just yeah. seems at like- At least it, so he can remember it. Uh, that was sort of my standard. That's right. So that's how I feel like. I feel like it needs to be at least an age where it's memorable for him. And two, three, I don't know, four or five is where I think is probably- I get antsy. You know, yeah. I want to go to Disneyland. I know. I love too. going, though. That's the thing. Well, yeah, so you, okay, now and that's why I, maybe I will go sooner because like my sister, that's where she wanted to go for her 30th birthday. So she loves Disneyland. My family loves it. It's been closed down for a while. So maybe we'll have this excuse. Katrina and I had a blast the last time that we went. So maybe. Oh, speaking of uh, Disneyland, like so in Shanghai, I, I think um, so they have a Disneyland there. But basically, the um, what's it called? The Pirates of the Caribbean. So the, the ride there is completely different than the one that we have here. Why? Be they've added so much to it. It's like it, it. It's pretty. Like I guess you can go on YouTube and you can do these kind of virtual tours mm. where you, where you actually uh, somebody does like a three sixty view of it and everything. But they have all these crazy graphics and stuff. They have like a whole scene where they have a war with all this uh, with ships like shooting cannonballs at each other, and then the 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 boat itself actually moves sideways and and it does a lot more things. It's kind of crazy. Disneyland's fun with kids i mean without kids i'm like whatever but with kids my daughter was such a fanatic when she still is but when she was little that it was fun watching her try to just stay up the whole time like we're i see her just she's dying she's tired because we're walking all day <laughs> yeah like all right you ready to go back no i want to see the fireworks no. i'm like the fireworks are gonna happen in like four hours tonight you sure yeah. you don't want to leave yeah yeah yeah, yeah, so yeah. You just pump them full of candy just yeah to like get that last bit <laughs> you know like come on yeah. and then leading up to disneyland it's a very powerful oh, uh, obedience tool dude speaking right. of are the, you sure you want to do that because we're gonna go to disneyland sure? speaking of the candy mm -hmm. thing we just i i just had the uh the candy battle with the family right now, right? So Easter is here, right? So mm. my mom, we're on this group, like oh, this group thread. Cadbury eggs. And oh. my mom was like, okay, so- I'll Only eat the whites, the rest what, of the crap. What can I put out, in, you? what can I put in Max's uh, basket, Easter basket? And I said like, you know- Real eggs. I put, <laughs> <laughs> I put toys, stuffed animals, coloring books. Money. Yeah, money. <laughs> I did say money. You know, you, you can give them all that stuff. My mom said, well, what about like, you know, chocolate covered raisins? Can I get, I said, no. No chocolate, no sweets, no candy, no nothing. So we went back and forth, and everybody's like, I can't believe. And you know, I, I eventually ended up getting like really irritated. And if this part, it was probably too far on my part, but I was just like, listen, I'll be the one, the first person to introduce sugar to my child. I said, my entire family, okay, including myself, 
has a sugar addiction. My sister was hyperglycemic. I, to this day, still battle with it. My mom is borderline diabetic. I say, we've been addicted to sugar because you allowed us to have fucking cake for breakfast. You know what I'm saying? And fruity pebbles, <laughs> yeah. you know, for dinner. Like, that's, we ate that way my entire life. And because of that, it has been a, a lifelong struggle for me to get rid of it. It's yeah. so, it is, it is absolutely difficult still to this day. Even with my experience, my knowledge of knowing about it, I still struggle with that. I've got ice cream in my freezer right now. It's such a hard thing for me. And I've, and I've been with people that have have been raised differently that were their their family raised them on whole foods mm -hmm. and then sugar and candy and things like that was introduced later in their life and they have a total different relationship with it yeah. they 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 don't desire it the same way that i desire it it's not the same thing because when they got it introduced to them they had already had fruits and vegetables and whole foods for so long that the, the the sugar that you get in candy was so overpowering mm -hmm. that a lot of times they wouldn't they won't even finish it They'll, they give him a cookie and they don't want to finish now, it. Now, when you eat candy and stuff now, do you hide from your son? Or are you like, he can't see this? I don't eat candy. Okay. Yeah, I don't eat what candy. Do you, you don't eat candy? Uh, I don't eat candy. Though, if you've ever seen me eat candy, that's the only time you've ever seen me eat candy. And it's normally because you pick it up from a grocery Whoa, store. Whoa, me? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, how did <laughs> this happen? <laughs> Wait, no, seriously. <laughs> you tell us hey, we can Hey, Justin, who is, who is out of- <laughs> Don't, hey, do I, hey take hey, a hey, fucking I, side I, for I, once. Take, take a fucking <laughs> side. <laughs> I don't care what side you take a side. When we go, when we fly somewhere, <laughs> okay? And if you don't, Doug, I'm going to make you speak up right now. Who is most likely oh, to buy so candy? Sal, thank you. Yeah. Hold on a second. Hold on. A yes, second. that's 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 only ever. But you tell stories all the time. Yeah, but I tell yeah. stories times of of when I used to eat candy like crazy. I don't eat candy like that. So at all. you don't have candy ever. Ice, ever. So ice cream? Do you hide your ice yeah. cream? He's candy. Yeah. Ice, if I were to have something, it's ice cream. But if you do, do you hide it or well, do you let him see you? No, he. Ne I eat it. If I eat ice cream, it's at eight o'clock at night watching a TV show. So he goes to bed. He, yeah, he's in bed by. Seven. He goes to bed. You bring out yeah. the ice cream. Yeah. What's the, <laughs> I want to make it clear to hey, the audience. If he finds that shit one day. Yeah. yeah. It's like he found your weed. Yeah. Huh? No, that, and you, just like you, Reese's. Yeah, you remember that commercial, the weed commercial? Yeah. Where, tell me where you found this, and the kid's like, "I learned it from watching you." Yeah, yeah. yeah. It could be your kid. <laughs> no, I. Like, like, hey, I absolutely think about stuff like that. Well, first of all, I mean, I've been talking about the ice cream thing because it's literally like in my refrigerator, right, or freezer right now. It wasn't, you know, for the last yeah. five months or whatever. So it, it rarely makes its way in. But it, again, it, here's where I struggle. And we talk about this. On By the, the way, show. I only get organic candy. Anyway, <laughs> it's no. true. I can't believe you're going to deny that right now. I was like, this guy gets the candy. Well, no, I didn't. No, no. When we're, when it's we're organic, it's rare horrible. when we go anywhere. It is. It and is. if I do, I'll grab some and share it with everyone. Yeah, by no fuckers. means. No. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody has a piece of the candy. I don't need it by myself. See, okay. See what you did. I know. Yeah, see, okay. but hold I on can't believe everybody's you getting defense. But I hear, I, I, thank I, God, say, Doug is here. Yeah. But I hear stories. You tell I stories. Yeah. No. Time. Oh, there was a time. There was in my twenties as a personal trainer where I ate candy every night. I mean, I every night always you could count on there being candy in my house or in my car. According to Jim Stepani, your, your recovery must be amazing. <laughs> yeah, I know, that I know. Candy post workout. Uh, I think that's why I get so <laughs> bad. Hey, you know that's why I get so passionate about when th these dumbass people like Jim Stepani give advice like that mm. because I know what it's like to be a kid who struggled with that and and to not be aware that you struggled with it justifying it because I was skinny trying to build muscle yeah, yeah. so why not why can't I pile all this candy on and then yeah. later on as I become a fucking grown ass man and weight does come on different now now it's a battle and even like even when I have like ice cream right so I have ice cream in the freezer you know how hard it is for me to not just pound the whole thing mm -hmm. like it is so hard for me to do like like Katrina has this ability she doesn't have any issue like this <clears throat> she can have a little tiny little scoop, you know, and eat it and be satisfied and done. I do not have that. Yeah, I, 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 that, I have foods like that or like that for me, and it's chips. If, if it's candy or whatever, it's fine. I'll have a little bit. But if we have potato chips, gone. They're gone. I'll literally eat them, and while I'm eating them, I'm looking at Jessica, and I'm yeah. going – why yeah help me well and here and so this is so i get really upset like with the family if they wanted you know because max like dude max eats everything he eats he loves vegetables he loves all fruits he eats all whole food like he eats so good mm -hmm. and i love that it's like why would i introduce that to him when he give him a, you want to see his, him light up and get excited give him a strawberry 
You want to see him get all? He'll eat like that and be all happy. Yeah, you don't want to blow his mind. Especially or now, where you can still like control. Yes, it, but I, I, I totally. I, this was a battle I've had with my parents the whole way through. It's not going to stop. You know, like they're going to keep pushing it because it's it again. This is one of the things that in their mind they think it's a way that they're showing love and they're like giving them like this like cool experience that you're not getting at home. So we have like an advantage because we're grandparents and we can just like spoil them. So yeah. this is a conversation Katrina had to have with her brother. So her brother, who you guys know, Andy, right, who has done a lot of stuff with us, he that's kind of his M.O. Like he's the he's a much older brother, like he's in his 50s. And all the, the kids, all the nieces and nephews, he's been the candy man. He has a candy addiction himself, and they all know to come to him. And like that's how he's built relationships with it. And it's been a real struggle for him because what I love about him and why I love my brother is that he he respects that. He knows how passionate I am about not doing that. But he always comes to Katrina like, hey, am I ever going to be able to give Max candy? And Katrina's like, listen, brother, like, you just got to work on building a relationship with him without it. You, you don't need to use candy to build a relationship with my son. Tell him to give him money. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm serious. Yeah, no. You want to get him excited? Give him a dollar. Yeah, you know, I just you, there's other ways to do that. And, and here's the thing, too, for the audience that think I'm going to be like this Nazi with my kid. Like, no. Like, when he can ask for it and we can have a conversation about it. Then and, you can say no. Yes. And then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Set me up right there. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yes, yeah, wait. That's yeah. what I've been doing the whole time. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. I bet we can talk about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. then, I, then I can also teach him delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. Like, Okay, son, you you can have candy, not or you can have this much candy later on, and I can mm. do things like that with you him. Gotta, you got to earn it too. You know, it's something that they can look forward to, and it's a treat. It's not like like growing up for me was dessert was an expectation. Like you eat a meal, then you have dessert. You know, and it's ridiculous. Yeah, like, why? Like we built our, our whole meals around like having to have dessert, and so it's like if I didn't have it, I was just like, where's the dessert? We ate like that. We had a dinner, and then we always had a dessert, and then dessert also became breakfast the next day. Like that's exactly how I ate my entire child. It was like dinner. You had a, and by the way, dinners were rarely like quote unquote healthy. You know, yeah. it was like fried chicken, mashed potatoes, and you know, cheese on broccoli. Oh, that yeah. good. Right. <laughs> and then, <clears throat> and then my mom, and my mom could bake her ass off. My mom baked incredible. So you'd be cookies or cake or something. And then you eat it for dinner with no, by the way, regular, no regulations whatsoever. I could have the biggest slice I want or go back three times. And then the next morning you finish it off and you do it because you have a, you have four siblings in the house. Yeah, you're fighting over that. I'm like, oh, there's less than half a cake left. If I don't go get it for breakfast, I, might, I won't be able to have it for later on. So you, you create that environment there. And that's how we were with cookies, with candy, with ice cream, with everything. Do you think of the bullshit we were told as kids, yeah. too, of uh, eat what you needed to eat for breakfast for energy for the day? Remember mm -hmm. this? When he's like, oh, I got a big test. Better eat a stack of pancakes with syrup. Oh, yeah. You know? okay. Halfway through the test, you're like, uh, <laughs> That happened to me so many times. Like, why am I not energetic? I had a bunch yeah. of pancakes. And, and honestly, pancakes are just glorified fucking cake. It's, it's the cake. same recipe. It's in the name. Pancake. <laughs> it's the same recipe. It's a conspiracy. Syrup is icing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's exactly <laughs> true. It's no fuck. different. It's yeah. exactly it's that. No, but I remember that's what we were told. Like, oh, no, you need to have a, a, a balanced breakfast, which included <laughs> pancakes, a glass of orange juice. Yeah. Oh, we'd have some milk. So there you go. Have a little bit of milk. And so growing up, that a healthy breakfast was that, was a yeah. stack of pancakes, bacon, and, and orange juice. That was a that would be healthy if we weren't eating like dessert yeah. for breakfast. So it's like, that's crazy. I love all those sugar cereal commercials. Like, well-balanced breakfast. They have like one apple next to like you know, <laughs> yeah. shitty cereal. Throw in an apple. It's balanced. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of cereal, did you guys hear about the guy that found the shrimp tails in his uh, cinnamon toast? Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> it, okay, he thought he did or he really did did so he posted it was, it was the cinnamon toast crunch right? yeah and he posted a video of it and it looked like a bunch of shrimp tails yeah cinnamon they, cinnamon toast crunch responded and said no that's just a bunch of clumped up sugar. collected sugar yeah, yeah that, that <laughs> looks like almost it. as bad yeah. yeah this this cereal has so much fucking sugar <laughs> yeah. that it, 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 it crystallized yeah, into together. shrimp like form yeah you know yeah. that you know the planets uh, formed in the solar system similar yeah. like so much sugar <laughs> that the, the gravity pulls them together and yeah. now we it have it evolved and then it walked out of your bowl yeah now, yeah. now when you guys see stuff like that I, I a lot of times i think that that's a, a ploy by like cinnamon toast crunch right for for a publicity just to get attention yeah because yeah. i always think that that there's like okay these days I do. how did he get all that attention he was wrong how did that hit the news all over? i feel like that's some that somebody's smart uh, that's advertising Dude. is getting that way okay now. so back in the day uh, correct me if i'm wrong but wasn't there somebody that was claiming they had like a human finger in one of their burgers yes that yeah. was wendy's wendy's i can't th that was real that was real 
yeah, yeah. that was that was not hey, that was not a ploy. That dude, that hurt that Wendy's. Really happened, and that hurt Wendy's big time. Oh, I re- yeah, because oh if you're gonna do God. a ploy, you gotta be smart about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Extra well, what, sh- extra yeah. sugar in your cereal so is a good the, ploy. A, f- finger a dead finger. finger. It was a, a a disgruntled employee, if I remember correctly. Maybe Doug they can cut look off it up. Their own finger. It was a disgruntled. No, no, no. I don't think so. But it was. I don't know where this finger came. That's that's the most important question. Yeah, is where the fuck did the finger come? Who's the guy missing the finger? Look up finger in Wendy's. I believe it was in Chile. I think it was in a in a. Oh, it was in the bowl of chili. You're right. I think it was in a bowl of chili. That's right. And I believe it was a disgruntled employee. I think. Let's. let's It was actually in San Jose. Oh, it was here. here? Yes, it was was here. Planting a severed finger, so she planted it in a bowl of chili. She she planted. Yeah, but whose finger was it? I know. Oh. So this was a ploy for her to sue. Wendy's. They call her the Chili Finger Lady. Like, did she go? <laughs> did she go down? So to, I rem- I do remember. By the way, don't look up Chili Finger. I'm pretty sure that's something oh, else. I, I do. Re- I do remember when this happened in San Jose because at that this is a time in my life when I was still you know eating fast food <laughs> every now and then, and I remember going like, I'll never go to Wendy's ever again. Oh, that that got, one backfired. That's not a good yeah. thing. Hey, what happened? Why don't you go out with her again? She got that Chili. She finger. got that Chili Finger. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not down with really, it. Really creep me out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, I tried something yesterday. What did you try? You ever hear a chili yeah. finger? Yeah. Don't tell me. Uh, I don't want to hear all new special. But then did the person bite into it? Did they like scoop it in their mouth? No. Like, oh, so no, she planted it in there she, to, to. Or did to you like? Did they like? It's like sticking out the top. Like, oh. No, she planted in there with probably the intention to sue Wendy's right. over it. And I think the so if I remember the story, somebody was disgruntled. So then I'm assuming she was upset about something, and that yeah. was her way of probably getting back, getting back, at, trying to get yeah. back at Wendy's, which, uh, it, you know, it, it did work. I don't know how much trouble she got in for doing that shit, but it did work because I, I know Wendy's lost well, a lot of business. Maybe she yeah. worked for Burger King. <clears throat> hmm? That would be like Ooh. a crazy that's, I conspiracy. Mean, that's, <laughs> we're going to put Fast them out of business. Wars. Wars. The plot thickens. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Man, cinnamon, back to the Cinnamon Toast Crunch, though. That was diabetes back in the day. If you really think about it, do you guys remember eating that? Yeah, it was one of my favorites. It was, uh, they weren't even pretending to be. Uh, it was CTC. It was really that, heavy. Well, wasn't dude. it Wasn't it Cinnamon Toast Crunch that you broke up with a girl over? Oh, uh, no, that was Frosted Flakes. Oh, that was Frosted yeah, Flakes. I, I got the story it wrong. Could have been. Could have yeah. been. Frosted Flakes was the healthy, I got, I that got, was the healthy sugar cereal. I, yeah. I, got, I, got the, the, I got Justin's story wrong. I got yours right, but I got Justin's. Remember oh, what she yeah. did? The, uh, what, what's, it, what's it called? Dude, the majority of people didn't get mine. Like, she showed me the stats and, and that one that, that I, you know, had on there that was false. Like most people didn't get it. Well, it was good. You did a good job yeah. because the thing that you well, was was wrong was believable, right? Because you yeah. played in a band, and so it's like Justin loves music. There's a right. very good chance that yeah. I said I partied with the lead singer from Smash Mouth, right? Yeah. Which is and not completely that's a real thing. No, 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 I, no, 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 that was a lie. That oh, was the, the one lie. lie. Yeah. yeah, but then he had things like I broke up with a girl over soggy cereal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like been, been arrested and all these other things, and I'm just like and then I had to explain that, and I'm like, oh great, you had to tell everybody why you got arrested. Yeah, I'm yeah. like I don't want to explain that. Yeah. It's nothing crazy. He's yeah. just it's, he's, it's the, he's, embarrassing. The original, he's the original chili finger. Yeah, yeah chili, <laughs> chili finger to get out one time. Hey, <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Hey, today is uh, um, Doug's day in the life. How you doing over there, Doug? Pretty good. Tried to post some video, though, but it won't go up for some reason. I think Doug's uh, tech, uh, what's the word on it? Cursed. Yeah. That's what I think. <laughs> a, I think technology your breaks. Your PC around it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. <laughs> Every time something goes wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I am cursed. This, yeah. video, this morning is so pissed off. I can't yeah. post these videos. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, man. Right, I didn't even think he was you doing it. It looked, like you, it looked like your girlfriend laid your clothes out this morning. Is she the one that dresses you every morning? No. That's, I did it myself. That is yourself, huh? So his, his Viore outfit was Yeah, off? yeah, oh, yeah. Did yeah. you see it? Are you not watching his story? I watch your guys' Day in the Life. I do later. And yeah, I scroll I through the whole thing. I and, wait yeah. till it builds momentum. I actually yeah. enjoy that. I do. I mean, the, and I know Doug doesn't like doing it right now, but I, I think that uh, the audience enjoys it. It, we, it gets more views than almost anything else. I actually see, I don't pay attention to your guys' normal story, but when you guys do your day in the life, I, yeah. I do pay attention to I mean, that. it is kind of, I, I see the appeal. Like, you can kind of get an insight on, like, how people do their thing and and uh, they want to see, like, more of, like, what you're doing outside It's of just here. so, it's so, it goes so against my nature to, like, I know, it's, there's, here's what I'm doing None of us are time. good at it. Yeah, you know, you know? I mean? <laughs> it's, is there such a thing as being good at it, though? It's really not, you know what's so funny? Dude, Here's there's the thing. people that really like they yeah. get into it. Yeah, that's what they do all day long. Yeah, yeah they're yeah, fake, yeah. brother. Fake. I know. There, there's going to come a time when that that and that's coming soon. By the way, you know, more and more people are becoming privy to like how fake social media is and how much everybody puts out the the best version of themselves. And now the, there's fake authentic, right? People that are, oh, look at me with my periods. Hey, I just oh, look shit at my pants. Look yeah, at me crying. Embarrassing. Oh, yeah, like that's not real either. You know what I'm saying? And I think. 
more and more people are going to start to realize that. And so, believe it or not, what you think you suck at, your people will respect and appreciate. The the, the ones you just said, we'll Justin, see. are the most annoying ones to me. Yeah. The people where they post a picture of themselves crying. Mm-hmm. Why? Oh, mm-hmm. I had a terror. This is me right now. And I'm blah, blah, blah. low. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I'm like if, if, yeah. you're, if you're that sad that you're crying, yeah, why are you, and then you have the wherewithal to you stop know, and you take know, a picture of yourself. You know when that exactly. when that really hit me? So I had our first day in the life for our audience that doesn't know this. I mean, obviously, some people put it together. The f- the first time we had to do so, we decided to launch this thing where everybody, each one of us, is going to do a day in the life every Wednesday on our thing, right? And I'm the first one to go. I commit to it. Well, fucking. Bentley died the night before, dude. Uh, yeah. I was fucked up. Yeah. And I remember going like, oh, what am I going to do? Am I going to cancel and not do this? I can't. We just started this. Okay, I'm going to do it. But I just, I don't feel like talking to the camera. Like, I yeah. don't, I'm, Brutal. and yeah, and inside of me, I cried and also that. And there, I remember thinking at one point, I'm like, wow, you know, people feel like this supposedly. And they go, let me grab my phone and video myself so I can show my audience that I too cry. And I'm like, yeah. that didn't ever, not even a second that crossed your mind. Never, not even a second. Did I want to do that? What I really want to do was just curl up and not because I'm afraid to let people know that I cry right. or afraid to let people yeah. know that I too hurt. It's just that I'm mourning yeah. and I don't need to announce it to the whole world that it, it's this a is a very personal thing. It's a very personal thing. I, look, I understand crying in front of people you're close to, you know, the people that care about you that are there for you. But your social media, I, it, what it screams to me is that you don't have close relationships. And that's the closest relationship you have yeah. is to this audience that is, who are these yeah, people? Yeah, I under, I, okay, I understand. And here, there's a difference here, right? Let's, let's pretend we're having a conversation and all of a sudden you guys take it to a left turn and we get like really deep about maybe my childhood and you're asking me about my dad's suicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I all of a sudden, like it gets me choked up and I start crying, right? Yeah, like yeah. there's a difference of a conversation moving in a direction like that, showing vulnerability right. and being yourself and, and authentic. There's a different side of you where you you are supposedly crying like, or oh, getting wait, right. I feel something happening. Yes, let me grab my <laughs> phone. Yes, yeah. get into my Instagram account, go to my story, video me, and then cry. Like, to me, that is not authentic. No, it almost it's almost like you know, if I'm in that type in that state of mind, I wouldn't even think to grab my phone no. until after. Maybe I'm done crying afterwards. If I'm one of those people, I would think, oh man, I should have captured that. Yeah. Let's bring on the tears again. <laughs> Pull uh, out my phone and take. A I know. Picture. I, went, I had I had a very similar experience to that when we had Paul check for like one of the first times, and he came into the studio and like my dog got hit by a car and died. Yeah, and was going through that, and then I was just like, oh my god, what do I do? Do I like, rush home right now? And you know, and I was like, I just have to like right now. I have to focus and 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 try to be the best person I can be right now, and and, and contribute. And then at home, I'm gonna just you know mourn and I'm gonna face this. Yeah. So I don't know. it's just. I I don't know. And I think people deal with things obviously in a different way and that's totally fair. But like to, to portray, that's not why, why it is, is because it feeds in the views and likes mm-hmm. because yeah. everybody watching, okay, whatever they, they, they claim their reasoning behind it's it. It's also trying to, we, we trying are, to pretend to be authentic. We are, we are attracted to drama. It's the reason why like, you know, the Ricky Lakes, Maury Povich's, the, those shows are, get so much views and attention is because everybody secretly loves to watch a train wreck. Mm-hmm. It makes them feel better about their lives. Right. Yeah. And so it draws the likes, it draws the views, which then drives the social media star. The yeah. person who is trying to get more views, trying to get more likes, trying to get more attention, sees that, wow, when I cry on Instagram or I tell these people about my drama in my life and I claim I'm being authentic and real, I get more views and more attention. What, what's it's that, just a cycle. Just what's that, and by the way, this is nothing new. What's that old saying? Um, I don't remember who said this, but it was like an old marketing saying, which was something like, uh, donate $10,000 to a oh, cause, yeah, yeah, yeah. but then spend $100,000 letting everybody know mm. that you do- donated $10,000. Totally. It's all it's all that portraying that image and showing people- You're A massive you, virtue signal. Massive. It's a very big one, and um, it does make me sad. when It's actually quite annoying. I see it, and I'm like, come on, man. It's, man. A, it's a part of the pendulum swinging, right? This is so new that we are able to peer into- They're not going to age well. That's all I can say. Those posters look so- That's right. That's right. It's not going to age well. It's going to be ridiculous. It's like the- I brought up the period thing. This That's like a movement that's been going- Picture with- you, Yeah, you that you had your period in your clothes and you're showing it. And yeah. you take a picture. Look at me. I'm normal. Like, or on the toilet. Look, I'm pooping. I've yeah. seen posts like that too. I know. Like, what the hell? The only people I, I send pictures on my poop to are my friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I never post that. Yeah. yeah. Like, when, I'll do that when one. it's really impressive, though. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you got to wait for those ones. Yeah. I, and, but for some reason, there's this this idea that 
uh, you know, the people that are not sharing that are not authentic. And I just, I just don't believe that. I don't believe that it's, it's authentic to not show the world that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand uh, that. Yeah. And uh. it's, and that's, that's not mean you're, you're shying away from talking about it, right? There's not, it's not like I'm trying to deny that I don't poop or I don't cry or I don't right. do those things. I'm, I'm very open about that. And if you want to ask me about it, we sometimes can, at the same time you poop and cry. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Those ones are the worst. Yeah. And I, <laughs> <laughs> this happens to just the, <laughs> you know it really hurts <laughs> hey i hope you're enjoying the podcast one thing real quick before we get to the questions head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our free fitness guides we have guides that can help you do everything from burn body fat to build muscle improving your squat strength or your bench strength we even have guides for personal trainers go head over again to mindpumpfree.com and download the guides. They cost nothing. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. Our first caller is Dwayne from Vietnam. Hey, Dwayne, how can we help you? Hi, uh, um, first of all, I just want to say thank you to you guys for accepting me on this, uh, on this little questionnaire. And you guys do a brilliant job. I love listening to you and all your information that you put out there. Um, my question today is, so I've only just recently started working out for probably about a year, but I, I mainly did cardio. A uh, bit of hit and cardio here and there, body weight training, and I've only really just started experimenting with barbell training, uh, maybe in the last three months or so. Um, I also just recently started tracking food uh, because I had a really bad relationship with food and my body. I was just eating anything and then nothing at all. Uh, so tracking calories is making me identify, you know, how much I should be eating and also gain muscle. I've also used your um, tracker on your website to to identify how much of nutrients or how many nutrients I should be consuming. Um, I've linked my fitness pal to uh, Google Fit, so it calculates how much I walk. I surf every every week. I do mountain climbing. I also do like long walks. So I should be consuming, according to um, the calculates, about 2,500 calories a day. But if I do my activities, it comes to it says Google Fit tells me that I I should uh, or that I burned 800 plus calories. So my question is, should I be consuming 2,500 plus the 800 calories that I've burned? Or should I just stick to 2,500? Because I don't feel like those numbers are right. Uh, I feel like I'm putting on a little bit more fat than I should be. Um, yeah, I'm just not, I'm, I'm not, the scales are not really moving in my favor. So I'm a, bit, a little bit confused and I wanted to, uh, your, your guys' opinion on that. Dwayne, how big are you? What's, uh, what's your size? I'm fairly light. I'm five foot seven. I used to be 72 kilos. I'm now 61.5. And have you been like all the exercise that you've been doing, the activities that you've been doing? Are, are, have you been consistently doing that for quite some time? Yes, I've I've walked about twelve thousand steps uh, for at least about a year now, and I've recently started taking up dancing and mountain climbing and surfing in the last month or so. So I've just added on to that. That's a lot of activity for only twenty five hundred calories. Or is it okay? Oh yeah, no. I mean, even even though your your size, okay, so you're not you're not over two hundred pounds. Twenty five hundred calories for someone who is doing twelve thousand plus steps a day, plus all the uh, activity that you're doing is is a lot in the first place. So, and but you said you are you feel like you're putting on body fat by just eating twenty five hundred calories. Yeah, that's what I don't understand. Well, I, I feel like my, my my lower belly has has gained a little bit more body fat than it used to. And then, what does the strength training look like right now? Uh, I'm doing it five days a week. Um, just this compound lifts, really. Um, I'm new to it, so I'm doing my chest two days, uh, legs two days, and one day I do. Five. So five days a week. So I would I would run something more similar to Maps Anabolic where you're doing strength training only two or three times a week. And okay. uh, all the stuff that you're doing, is it something that you don't want to stop doing because you you love hiking and, and going outdoors and doing all this stuff? Or are you open to scaling some of that back and putting more focus and energy towards the strength? Uh, I'm okay just scaling back, to be quite honest, because I am fairly tired. <laughs> I think the, the lack of sleep as well is not probably helping me in any way. Yeah, I, so I have a, I have a few more questions uh, for you, Dwayne. You, you said you had a bad relationship okay. with food. What did yes. that What did that look like? What were you Were you somebody that was really skinny, so you your relationship with food was to eat more to try and bulk up, or were you someone that was worried about being having too much body fat, so you were you were uh, you know restricting? I was really really skinny fat to be honest. So I had a like a beer belly and stuff, but I was a really 
like thin, thin guy overall, but I had a beer belly and I, I just gave up at one point. I was like, I just ate everything and I just gained more and more and more and more in fat. And um, about a year ago, I decided that I wanted to just completely shut that fat. So then I just cut down my calories massively and I ate the same thing for about six months, which was like oats in the morning and then boiled chicken and eggs and that's it. Oh, yeah. And that's what I, that's what I knew that I, I thought that that was the way to go forward, you know, and the last six months has been a complete change where I'm starting to learn nutrition. I can't do that to myself. Okay. And, that explains and, a lot. And, yeah. And how do you feel uh, tracking calories and adding things up and adding up steps right now? Because you, uh, you, you know all these numbers, so it sounds like you're pretty meticulous. Yes. How, is, that, is that making you feel better or, you, or is it adding a little stress to your life? Yes. It, like, no, no, no. I, I absolutely love it. Like I can sit the whole day and do it because I learned so much in terms of like how much a strawberry has and how much a kiwi fruit has and stuff like that. So. Okay. It's just like kind of one of my passions, so it's something that I really enjoy. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with informing yourself um, with what food has and uh, you know how many grams of protein you need mm-hmm. and carbohydrates and fats and that kind of stuff. But here's what I'm hearing um, from you: I, I I feel like you're 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 just taking the obsession to a different level, which might be healthier than it was before. But I don't think meticulous tracking is is a good idea. In fact, what I would recommend if you were my okay. client. If you were my client, I would move you away from tracking and I would have you completely pay attention to performance. So strength, are you getting stronger and how do you feel? You mentioned earlier that you're really fatigued and tired. Mm-hmm. So that would t- mm-hmm. that would be a sign that you're you're either not eating enough or you're exercising too much and not giving yourself ample time uh, to recover. So I would look at strength and health, uh, sleep, libido, mood, skin, digestion. And I would stop placing focus on all these numbers aside from your strength because you're, the, the, the relationship you have with food, if it was bad before, getting into the numbers and obsessing over them can actually make it just as bad. It might feel better because the mm-hmm. foods you're eating might be a little more balanced. But you know, when I hear from you that you ate the same thing every day for six months, um, that makes me say, okay, probably want to pull back from counting calories, counting macros, counting steps. Like maybe go live your life a little bit and enjoy your workouts Mm -hmm. and pay attention. Like I said, am I stronger? Can I deadlift more? Mm -hmm. Can I bench press more? Do I feel more energetic? And and rather than using the the, the numbers metrics, use those metrics, focus on those things. Have you ever done a a straight one to five rep range kind of straight set approach and and just like focused on that and, and saw, you know, where that took you? Yes, I, I've recently started tracking in terms of how much I'm lifting as well. And if I gradually increase every week and again, it's only been a lot, like maybe the last month or so, but I do see a gradual increase in terms of the, the reps and the sets I'm doing. Right. Uh, in terms of like, exercise. yeah, in terms of the rest in between, I'm just, I'm, uh, you know, I'm just wondering, cause I know a okay. lot of times I've had clients who've done the compound lifts, but haven't really applied uh, enough of that rest period to, you know, really focus on uh, just the, the strength portion of it and not trying to get through the workouts. Um, so, so if I'm, if I'm doing about 10 reps, I normally take about a minute and a half to about two minutes of a, of a break and then start again okay. or do the, the remaining of the sets that I need to do. That's the normal kind of gap I have in between. That that's not that's not bad. I think that's yeah. okay. And I and I think Sal has got the best advice with the moving away from tracking so much. But okay. I do I do want to address that the, the fact that you've done that. So I think I I do like that because it brings awareness to where you're kind of mm-hmm. at. And when you told the rest of the story to Sal, it makes and I'll, I'll make the sense to you for why this is happening, right? So why do you feel like 2,500 calories and and you're putting on body fat? Well, because you ate you know, oats and eggs and boiled chicken for six months. I mean, you're talking about probably a thousand calories right there at most. And then with all the activity Mm -hmm. that you were doing, sure, you probably lost some weight uh, doing that, but you also trained your metabolism to slow down. So your metabolism adapted to that calorie intake of a thousand calories with 12,000 plus steps a day. And so anything above, you know, 1500 calories probably does feel like it's putting body fat on you. So that's so we can address that's the reason why you feel that way. But then I would also agree okay. with Sal that let's not get hung up so much on that that's an issue and start cutting the calories and go way back down. Let's start going off of how you feel and and pulling back on the five days of training. Uh, your, your body type, where you're at, what you're trying to accomplish, 
I, again, Maps Anabolic, I think it would be. Do you, if you don't have Maps Anabolic, we'll send that over to you. Do you own it or no? No, I've just got the No BS abs. I just recently purchased it last week, and I've got Sal's uh, uh, nutrition guide, which I really want to read. Okay, so we're we're gonna send Maps Anabolic over to you. I want you to follow that. I actually want you to start with just two days a week. Start with mm-hmm. two days a week, full body routine. Follow the program as it's written and it's laid out. Scale back on some of the 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 crazy amount of activity that you're doing outdoors and stuff like that. As far as steps. you don't need to go, you don't need to go drastic. I don't want you to sit on the couch and be lazy from that. I mean, enjoy your life. Just do activity that you enjoy. Yeah, so, if, so recuperative. It, yeah, don't be sure. don't be active for exercise. Be active for things you enjoy. There's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that. But I think what we're trying to do is move you away from a mentality uh, and a mindset that's going to lead you down the wrong path. So. You know, you got your. Re- so here's the thing: for the next three months, just focus on getting stronger, and then, and, and and then, as far as activity is concerned, just do do stuff you enjoy. Don't worry about tracking your steps, and am I walking enough? Am I swimming enough? You just do stuff that you enjoy and and have fun, but focus on getting stronger for the next few months. After the next few months, then go ahead and see, uh, you know, what your body fat percentage is, see how you weigh, and all that stuff. And I bet you'll be pleasantly surprised. Well, especially if you take the advice and it sounds like you grab the intuitive guy. So when you read that, uh, that's exactly yeah. the angle that Sal's going, right? So it's going to move you away from mm-hmm. weighing and measuring and tracking your food and starting to learn to just kind of listen to your body, eat when you're hungry, feed yourself correctly, and pay attention to the signals that make your body feel good. So read that and follow that as your guideline for nutrition and then stick to about a two to three day a week uh, strength training. Okay, so would you recommend that I immediately start doing the intuitive guide, or like just cat- drop yeah. tacking? Yeah, the, the, the intuitive guide. I feel. Yeah, the intuitive guide is going to go into more depth with essentially what I'm talking about, but really mm-hmm. focus on strength. M- make that okay. your goal, because here's the deal. Okay. I, I, and, and I, you know, I, like I said, I've worked with a lot of people, um, and it, you're. It sounds like you are. You know, you'll set yourself with a goal, and you'll be very focused on it. So we can't just take your your focus off of one thing and then not let it go anywhere else because it's going to find something. So take your focus and place it squarely on strength. I want to get stronger in the next three months. I want to be able to deadlift this much. I want to be able to squat this much. I want to be able to bench this much. Mm -hmm. Focus on that. And then the intuitive guide will help you with the nutrition part. Okay, perfect. Thank you guys. I really, really appreciate it. Awesome. No problem. Yeah, it's, um, you know, for most people, getting them to figure out calories and macros mm-hmm. and is, is a great step. For some people, it's the wrong direction. It yeah. just puts you in the wrong direction. Well, some people, you kind of got to rein back a little bit. Like, he seems like a, you know, somebody that's going to pursue a goal and and do it, you know, down to the to the last, like, dotted line and, uh, you know, is very focused. And so, like, a lot of times it just needs somebody else, an outside perspective to kind of, you know, say, hey, why don't we try, like, focusing more on recovery and maybe, like, backing off a little bit? Well, there is a, there is a very positive part of him tracking, though, because it gives us that insight. Had he not tracked like that, I wouldn't be able to know if he's eating low or not, right? He could be just totally underestimating or overestimating. But as soon as he told me the calorie intake that he's taking and he feels like he's gaining fat and the amount of activity that he's Mm -hmm. doing between five days of training, all the outdoor activity, 12,000 steps a day, right away I go, okay, that's super low calorie. Mm -hmm. I mean, what what he should be at is probably closer to 3,000, 3,500 at least calories just to maintain, much less put on body. So that right away gave that away. When Sal started asking more questions about his relationship with food, and then we find out oats, hard-boiled eggs, and boiled chicken, I mean, that might not even be 1,000 calories. that's barely anything. Yeah, you're talking about super low calorie right there, and while doing all that activity, I mean, he's just as slowed his metabolism. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I got clients. This is a hard conversation to have. It's a hard uh, thing to convince someone to do, but I can't tell you how many times I had clients take their focus entirely off the mirror, off the scale. I would tell people, take your scale, put it in the closet. Don't weigh yourself at all for the next three months. We're going to focus entirely on strength Mm -hmm. and health. And then at the end of that three-month period, I'd say, all right, let's bring out the scale. Let's test your body fat just to see what would happen. And they would always be blown away. I got got leaner. I I dropped 4% body fat. This is wild. Or, oh, my God, my my weight is the same on the scale, but I dropped all this body fat and gained this muscle. I had no idea this would happen. Yeah, as a coach, I mean, your job is just reassurance that you're doing the right thing. Like, they need to hear that constantly, somebody like this. Our next caller is Elisa from Ohio. Hi, Elisa. How can we help you? Hey, guys. I'm really excited to be here. And Sal, congratulations on your book. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I'm um, kind of a recent listener. I started about six months ago, but I binged all of your past episodes. 
And most recently, I've been following Adam's HRT journey. Oh. Um, so for me personally, my question is around testosterone supplementation for women. Um, I listened to the, was it John Romano? Yes. Uh, podcast recently, and I don't think he covered this, or if he did, he was negative on supplementation of testosterone for women. So um, just a little bit of my backstory. I've been into fitness since I was 15, and I am in my late 40s now in about a year or two ago, I was having a lot of trouble sleeping. I had insomnia, very low energy. I was also having trouble concentrating, kind of fuzzy brained. So I went to my regular GP and she offered to prescribe sleeping pills to me. And I just said, no, thank you. A friend of mine was seeing an MD that specialized in HRT and he ran my labs, saw that I was low in progesterone testosterone, and also high, super high in estrogen. So he recommended supplementation with progesterone and also a little bit of testosterone. So what I mean by a little bit is I can barely fit it into the syringe. It's like on the one line, it's one, I think it's 1.5 milliliters or 0.15 milliliters is what it is um, per week. Um, And now my levels are somewhere around 100, like the fifth day after I um, supplement. And I'm sleeping much better. I am. I have more energy. I'm concentrating much better at work. And then just recently, about a month ago, I went to see my GP, and she saw that I was supplementing with testosterone, and she asked me if I was transitioning. And I was really confused. Uh, I said, transitioning to what? And she said, well, that would be the only reason a woman would supplement with testosterone. And I guess I just want to know from your guys' opinion, is that true? Is she crazy? Which of my doctors is nuts? Yeah, no, that's a good question. So first off- <laughs> This is the problem with GPs yeah, today, dude. I know. So first off, no, we're not uh, doctors. So this is going to be, our, our, our advice is based off not. of our experience and right. experience working with, uh, with clients. Uh, number one, I'm going to refer you to somebody on social media that I think is excellent with balancing out, with helping women balance out their hormones, Dr. Jolene Brighton. So if you don't know who that is- Find her. She's got great She's amazing. information on balancing out progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone. Testosterone is present in women, and it does have a role in a woman's health, just like it does in a man's. Now, in a man, it's the dominant hormone. It is the male hormone. But in women, low testosterone can cause things like low libido, low confidence, low drive, can, can contribute to osteoporosis or osteopenia, muscle loss. Um, I'm not sure what the amount of testosterone you're being prescribed right now. Um, it definitely isn't one milliliter because that's 200 milligrams. That would be more than what a man would take every week. But that that one little line, it sounds like you're on something like 10 milligrams. I'm not sure uh, what the dose is, but it sounds like you're working with a specialist in the field. Now, a general practitioner is not a hormone uh, specialist, just like they're not a nutritional specialist. I've had uh, clients go to a general practitioner and the general practitioner give them dietary advice that makes me shake my head. So I would definitely refer to the hormone specialist because that is exactly what they're specialized in. You did mention you feel a lot better too. And I feel like that's the best evidence of all. If you feel good, um, then you're probably on the right track, uh, at least in comparison to how you were doing and before. 10 milligrams of testosterone is not going to transition you into a man. I'll tell you that right yeah, now. Yeah. I, I don't know what the dose is, but that's a low. That's a, that sounds like a, a few. Yeah, people, that's yeah. What I, exactly, I, exactly. We don't know exactly what it is, but by what you're describing, I think it's it's very, very low, and the, that amount is not going to transition you into a man. So that's. I mean, this is a, this has been a constant battle my entire career with general practitioners is they, they go through their schooling many times, th- you know, three decades before a lot of them stop learning or going beyond that. And they give advice in areas that they're just not a specialist. If you're seeing a hormone therapist, trust me, he or she knows their shit probably a lot more than the GP does in this area. So, and like Sal said, I think if you're feeling good, and you and you like the way you feel, you're probably doing really, really, really good. And to Jolene Brighton, we did two episodes with her. So if you haven't listened to those episodes, you can search on Mind Pump. And we talked, that was mainly what we talked about was women's hormones. Yeah. Now here's here's the one thing I will say about hormone imbalances. Oftentimes, uh, there is a root cause to why hormones are off. And what you can do, there's two routes you can go with fixing this. You can either solve the root issue which sometimes is very difficult. Um, it can be challenging. It can be very mysterious. 
The other option is to just supplement with the hormones and balance them out um, exogenously. The problem with that is you may be masking the symptoms of whatever the root cause was you know, in the first place. Um, so those are the two options. Now, here's the deal. Sometimes you can't figure out the root cause or sometimes your hormones are so out of balance that that, that, that becomes a more pressing issue. You know, For example, if you're a man and something in your life is causing your testosterone to crash and you can't figure out what it is and you're trying to raise it, but it's so low that it's like, we need to get this up because it's causing uh, health problems. That can also be the case uh, with women as well. So those are the two, kind of the two directions. Um, but yeah, you're working with a specialist in hormones. I would listen to them over the general practitioner when it comes to hormones. Things to look out for with testosterone with women. Are you getting any masculinizing effects? Are you growing hair where you normally didn't? Are you noticing a deepening of your voice? Is your libido like way out of control where you become impulsive? Um, those, you know, mood swings. Um, but it sounds like you feel way better than you did before. If I'm, am I correct? Yeah, I feel better. And I mean, my husband hadn't said anything about me being super hairy or anything. So, <laughs> yeah, I haven't noticed anything. He hasn't noticed anything. So. I, yeah. I agree, though, with Sal. I, I, I do think, and if you've listened to my story back uh, when I was on uh, hormones, then I came off, and you know, I spent a good three years uh, and during this podcast sharing that kind of journey of trying to troubleshoot it and figure it out myself. And I had some success, like I was down in the low low two hundreds, and I worked myself up to about four hundred naturally. Uh, but just I, I'm recently back on hormone uh, replacement therapy now. And feel a lot better. I just wasn't where I never could get it back to where I think I was before. Um, so I, I've also know that I'm kind of signing up for that for the rest of my life. So to Sal's point, if if you never kind of get to the root cause of what's causing all those issues, then you might be signing up for taking those hormones forever. But hey, if you can't figure it out naturally and figure out what the root cause is, and it's making your it's improving your life that much right now by doing that, that's something that uh, I I would I'm doing. So I totally agree and understand. Right. So w root cause, couldn't age just be one of the root causes? No, no. no. You will notice a change in hormones as you age, but there's a natural um, change and then there's the unnatural types of changes. So for example, a man's testosterone will lower as he gets older, but it shouldn't crash, right? So you shouldn't be a man in your 40s and have testosterone that's, you know, 250 or something like that. Now, it'll be lower than it was when you were 18, but not that low. And the same is true for women. You'll notice changes in progesterone and estrogen and even a woman's testosterone. But if they, if they're b b lower than, you know, what would be considered a healthy range. And but by the, but by even, the way, even those situations though, Sal, a lot of times the, the, the factors that a cause that of, of aging is actually less of them aging and more of the lifestyle that's what I'm saying, over yeah. those years. Yeah. yeah. So, so, and, and also, you know, the ranges that you'll get from the labs can be so wide. Mm -hmm. and so, and, and healthy is usually not at the extremes, you know, like, you, you know, it, it could, the range for a man's testosterone is 300 to 1100. Like what the hell? That's a huge difference. So does that mean if I'm 305, I'm good? Um, not necessarily. And they do that with, with women's tests as well. So, um, and again, your quality of life is very important. How do you feel? How is your energy? How's your skin, your recovery? Like those things are also very important. Quality of life, I think, is something that sometimes we ignore and we just look at the numbers. Well, your numbers are okay. I know you feel mm -hmm. like shit, but your numbers are okay, so therefore you're okay. I, I disagree with that. Right. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. Yep, for that helps. Th thank you. Thank you. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, um, it's funny, you know, especially when it comes to hormones or, you know, I mean, gastro issues. I look, mm -hmm. I dealt with gut issues going to the GP and was getting zero, zero answers, Let's you know, yeah. Oh, just wait it out. Oh, you'll be fine. Oh, take some, you know, Pepto-Bismol or whatever. I'm like, okay, this is not helping me. Yeah. They, they have specialists for a reason. Well, I want to, you'll get conflicting diagnoses as well. I, mean, yeah. I know Courtney has gone through this with her thyroid as well. Just uh, the amount, the range of where they'd like her to be and like what she actually was feeling through that. So there's a lot of uh, trial and error that is going to go with it as well. Yeah, I want to reiterate that what Sal said about us not being doctors, right? So this is always a tough area for us to skate when you get clients that come to you that have, you know, questions uh, above your pay grade, mm -hmm. right? Like this yeah. is this is not what I went to school with. But 
in our defense, uh, I've dealt with this a ton, you know, and and a lot of this is 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 communication between me as a personal trainer with the specialists and asking them questions about what's going on, and then doing my best to help implement the lifestyle changes. For example, like with myself, the things that I was trying to do is you know more sunlight, focusing better, not overtraining, making sure that I have a balanced diet. Like there are a lot of natural things that you can do to try mm-hmm. and potentially address what the root cause is. But at the end of the day, like you said, Sal, I mean, if if she's tried all these things and it's not working, it's not helping still, and then taking this low of a dose of testosterone is helping her, uh, then yeah, I mean, that's that's improving quality of life for her and I, I'm all for it. And this is what I can't stand about GPs mm-hmm. is they an area where they, they speak out of turn. And yet, because they're a doctor for so many people, they, it carries so much weight still. That, oh, my doctor said I should eat this way or my doctor says this, I'm going to turn into oh, a man well, if there, I do that. This is just voices that there's more options out there too to get a second opinion, to really like, you know, take this upon yourself to do more uh, investigating and, and educate yourself more on the topic. Yeah, I've had some GPs tell clients, uh, they'll come to me and say, well, my doctor says I shouldn't do uh, lower body exercises because my knee hurts, so I shouldn't do any anymore at all. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a huge yeah. range of exercises we can do that'll actually make your knees feel better. I've had doctors, GPs tell my clients to take shakes throughout the day and not eat yeah. to lose weight. Oh, we just got to drop your calories. Here's yep. a thousand calories with the shakes. Too. Just do this. And I'm like, okay, this is not... Now, of course, GPs have tremendous value um, in many, many cases. But yeah, if you are if you have a specialist, the specialist in, in, the, in, in hormones is the person that I would defer to, not the person that's not the specialist. Our next caller is Clark from Tennessee. Hey, Clark, how can we help you? Hey, so first off, uh, huge fan. I really love you guys' podcast and everything you guys do. And thank you for taking my question. Uh, so I recently finished uh, Map Strong. I uh, had a lot of really good strength gains with it. Uh, I had to take a month off of lifting for a, a non-injury procedure. Uh, and now I'm, I'm back at it and uh, I want to start Maps Aesthetic. Uh, but I, in, in order to gain some, um, some muscle and some strength to help boost my metabolism, as you guys preach on the show. Uh, but I'm also training for a triathlon at the end of July and the end of August. And I wanted to know uh, how you guys would recommend pairing uh, MAPS aesthetics uh, with triathlon training in order to still gain some uh, muscle and some strength. Okay, so I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's a bad combo. Conflicting goals yeah. right here, brother. Yeah, here's what'll happen. If yeah, do, yeah, for sure. Here's what'll happen if you do MAPS aesthetic while training for a triathlon. You'll lose muscle, overtrain, probably injure yourself. Okay, so I've trained, okay. quite, I've trained quite a few triathletes, and I know mm-hmm. the type of training – that is involved with being a, triathl- uh, a triathlete and being successful at it. Um, it's a lot of, obviously, a lot of running, biking, and swimming. And so yep. the strength training that you're going to do to supplement that is actually quite minimal. Okay. Mm-hmm. We don't want to do a lot. Most of the time you should spend training should be on those three things that you do and maybe correctional exercise to prevent injury. If you do strength train, which I think you should, I would limit it to one day a week and you would do okay. maybe maybe four exercises, four exercises, a few sets each just to build overall strength, focus on compound lifts, your general lifts, and mm-hmm. that's pretty much it. Any more than that, if you add that to your current training, it's just going to be too much. And the closer you get to your race, the less of the resistance training you're going to do because your training for the triathlon is going to ramp up the closer you get to the competition. As that ramps up, you got to scale back the resistance training. And and at that point, and what I would do with my clients, you know, about four weeks before the event is we would stop lifting weights and only do correctional exercise. I would only do Mm -hmm. mobility work with them just to prevent injury and keep them mobile leading up uh, to the event. Now I have a question because the only way I'd have different, different advice is if you, you answer this question uh, different is, how, okay. how, you know, the triathlon, are you, are you very serious and competitive about it? Or is it like something that you and your buddy just want to do for fun? Uh, it's just for fun. Uh, just more of an achievement. Um, so something I'd be able to complete and do, um, you know, I guess for me, the overarching goal would just still be continually gaining uh, muscle and strength, uh, to just, you know, I, I really, it, as I listen to you guys' show more and more, you know, preaching, boosting the metabolism, helping the body, you know, kind of do the work for right. you. I, I like that idea, and I would like to continue to down that path. Okay. So, um, 
I got I, I got to count I got to counter that. I'm going to counter that because nobody does a triathlon just for fun. That is serious. <laughs> that is serious. I mean, you're talking about uh, like mileage in three it's different, grueling. Uh, yeah, you know, endurance uh, disciplines. So um, that's a lot of training just to get ready for. It. So here's another. I'm going to add one more question to what Adam said. What okay. does what does your typical week look like getting ready for a triathlon? That'll give us more information. That'll give us the right information, I guess. Yeah. So, um, getting ready for triathlon, I mean, I I'm able to pair maybe two exercises, like a swim and a run in a day to get it down to four to five days of training a week. The training plan that I have triathlon wise recommends six days of training yeah. a week, mm -hmm. um, in order to get ready. And yeah. how, how many miles, how many miles are you running, uh, biking and swimming throughout the week on average? Uh, so on average, uh, probably running, uh, at least six to seven miles a week, um, biking, you know, um, range on average, probably 20 miles and then, um, swimming, you know, close to 3000 meters, um, yeah. A week. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah, going to, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to stick to what I said. Yeah. yeah. Sal's yeah. right. Sal. Okay. So if you're going to follow that, Sal's a hundred percent right. The reason why I asked right. the question I asked is because, and by the way, I didn't do a triathlon. I did like a, a muddy buddy race, which is like 10, <laughs> 10 K, right? <laughs> but I did it with, with the same type of intention that it muddy sounds buddy. like you kind of have. It was like a, you know, me and my two best friends talking shit to each other, playing video games over a weekend. They're calling me out because like I was this big muscle bound guy that I wouldn't be able to race them and beat them. I talked shits that I would, but yet I really cared about the way I looked. I didn't want to change that, but I knew that if I threw in a little bit of cardio in my training to leading up to that, I had the, I had enough to be able to hopefully win, which I did. Uh, but I didn't lose a lot of muscle, but I also didn't do a lot of cardio. I did just enough yeah. to know that I could get out there and finish the race, and I, I had enough grit in me to, to push through and do okay. I didn't by any means finish first or in the top 10 of anybody that was finishing there. So I do think that if you're, you're like, hey, I just want to say I completed a triathlon, and so mm -hmm. I swim one day, I bike one day, I run one day for an hour of training, I absolutely think that you can complement that with strength training and still kind of hang on to some muscle mass and look all right. But with the regimen that you're running, the amount that you are you are running and biking and swimming, that is already so high yeah. that anything more than probably one day a week of strength training is going to be overkill. I probably wouldn't do more okay. than one. And I would definitely focus on highlighting the posterior chain in that strength training uh, regimen to, to be able to support all this, you, you know, anterior driven type of movement and, and repetitive right. stress. And also really like emphasizing ankle mobility, hip mobility, keeping that, uh, you know, a constant thing throughout the day, multiple times a day, uh, you know, to keep you nice and healthy in your joints going through this uh, crazy uh, adventure. Yeah. And I, I here's yeah. some, here's some great exercises. Your, your barbell squat's going to be good. The closer you okay. get to, the closer you get to your race, do split stance. So stop barbell squatting. Do things like lunges or Bulgarian split stance squats or single leg exercises. Single leg toe touches are a good exercise. Uh, overhead carries are going to be really good to help you with your, your core and your posture. Overhead presses are going to be really good. Bench presses are fine. Not a big deal. You don't need to do a ton of them, but bench presses are fine. I like rows. I like rows a lot for, for triathletes because it helps, again, with countering that forward posture that you get from running and from from cycling. Um, uh, pullovers, pullover, dumbbell pullovers, barbell oh. pullovers, great exercises for the, the swimming portion to also help strengthen that kind of shoulder mobility at the top. So there's some exercises you can focus on. Are you doing a standard distance, like Olympic uh, distance triathlon? Or are you are you doing the sprint or? Yeah, okay. so I've done a sprint before, and so I'm trying to accomplish the uh, the Olympic uh, this year. So okay. um, yeah, that which you know is quite a bit. Of distance. <laughs> yes, bro, yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a lot. Yeah. Bro. A little bit of a challenge. <laughs> yeah, 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 no big deal. Yeah, take, yeah, it, take a, it easy on yourself, dude. What one ma one massive goal at a time. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Almost, that, <laughs> that's almost one mile swim. That's a was a 25 mile bike ride and then a, a yep. six mile over six mile run in, in all yep. one race yeah so yeah. all right well hey good yeah. luck yeah once a week resistance training do correctional exercise that's it don't do any more than that okay don't do maps aesthetic all right. while training for a triathlon yeah. do it later all right perfect sounds good thank you guys so nope. much no problem
Yeah, when you're when you're training for an event, train for the event. This don't, is what we. And, and some this is the are, number one question that we get all the time. And I don't think we we well, have, you want your cake and eat it too. You know, you want all the things. It does. Everybody want everybody wants to be like a triathlete and look jacked. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, they're just is. they're just conflicting Dude, goals. I went through this when I was doing jujitsu. I went through this. I trained in jujitsu. Love lifting weights. Didn't want to give up either one or whatever. And I just overtrained. Yeah, but I, I, I didn't get better until I scaled my resistance training down to twice yeah, that a week. Takes away from your training. That was it. You know whose fault this is? This is the media's fault. Yeah. I'm going to blame the media on this one because this is what we do. We always we highlight the anomaly. We highlight that one yeah. runner who looks freakish, or that CrossFitter yeah, right. who looks jacked, and you know Herschel we, Walker. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> you know? We highlight these bodies that are absolute anomalies, dude. Mm -hmm, they're yeah. they're one in a million that that look sick, and mm -hmm. they also train in a sport that totally conflicts with their body type. It's just you rarely ever see it, and so we get these people that always have these athletic endeavors or sport like goals mm -hmm. that they want to achieve, while also building an, an incredible bodybuilding type of physique. No, not going to happen. I, when I trained triathletes, they would train with me once or twice a week. And if they came twice a week, one day a week with was slow, traditional resistance training at a moderate intensity. I wasn't even going high intensity. Yeah. And the other day a week was literally all mobility, yeah. stretching, all damage control, massage. Dude. Yeah, that <laughs> kind of stuff. I that mean, was you're it. putting your body in a meat grinder yeah. Like yeah. with that pursuit. So. But I wanted to I wanted to make sure too though because I I've been there before where we like I said messed around and did like a muddy buddy type of race that's 10k, you know, and it wasn't yeah. like and I could have like if I really cared about winning that and that's all I cared about, I could have I would have put my training aside yeah. and dedicated it all to being one of the best racers out there. But I was like, nah, I just want to be able to complete it. I just want to be able to beat my friend. You right. know what I'm saying? I just want to be able to beat my buddy, but I still want to be jacked. And so most of my training still was centered around weightlifting. Yeah. And then I would throw in like a run or two, like a week yeah. every yeah. week. Tra you can't tra casually do a triathlon. No, you, yeah. Know, yeah. Dude, you can't, you yeah. can't do it. Swim one mile. Just do the first part. Just <laughs> yeah. swim one You'll mile. You'll drown. Yeah. see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Our next caller is Morgan from Missouri. Hey, Morgan, how can we help you? Hi, guys. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm really thankful for everything that you do and the content you make. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, my question today has to do with um, excessive exercise and trying to cut back on that. So um, just as a background, I'm a fitness instructor for uh, group fitness classes, and I work out a lot. Do, doing that. And so I'm trying to cut back on the energy I give in class because I've recently started resistance training and I love those results. And I know that that is where I need to be, but with as much as I do, it isn't sustainable for my energy and my sleep and kind of what I give. So I just didn't know if you had any advice for physically doing less, but still keeping the progress I've made and not retract or not regress at all and continue to reach my goals, but kind of cut back on as much as I'm getting right now. I think we should defer this one to Justin since he's the big bar guy. Yeah, this, I love bar. This is uh, yeah. between your Zumba and bar. This is yeah. what you be doing all the time. So I've only, I'm the only one with the balls to do it. <laughs> so. We actually all took this. You guys remember when we took this class? We did. It's very difficult. We, we took a bar yeah. class and got our asses handed yeah. to us. It's very, very challenging. <laughs> okay, so very it is. It's sneaky. You don't expect it, but I do bar and circuit and hit. So. During class, I do a lot, but I'm ready to cut back as an instructor and give more to my personal workouts. Okay, so so, so what's that going to look like for you? When you say cut back, how many hours a week will you be teaching and being active in classes? So I s am hoping to just physically not do as much and still instruct with, you know, verbal cues and things like that. It'll, um, like, it, it, I teach at least one class a day, if not more. Um, usually it's two. So I'm hoping to not do as much there and just kind of be active and not physically work out, but then do 20 minutes of cardio in the morning like I typically do. And then uh, it looks like it'll probably be 45 minutes to an hour of resistance training. If Because I just started, uh, I got the bikini bundle, so I just started that. If you were allowed to, that's exactly what I would I would make you do is is not allowed to move in your classes. You could just cue and teach. Okay. So... Um, we talked recently in a, in a, in a qua where, um, I shared that I used to actually train a lot of group. In fact, I, was, I got known as helping out all our group X instructors because they struggled with building the body they wanted, but they were exercising four or five hours a day. 
And one mm-hmm. of the one of the biggest hurdles I always had was like, I, I know you love to hype the class and get the energy going and, and move with them, but you're not allowed to. So long as I'm coaching you, uh, you can't. You got to got a cue. If you're gonna if you're gonna have me help you and and build this physique and build this metabolism, then we got to back off all this high intensity moving around all day long. In fact, in your 20 minutes of cardio, I would cut that also, and we would okay. we, we would 100 percent focus on the MAPS program. It's all about strength training. And if you want to be a teacher still, that's fine. You can teach, but you can't be, you can't be bouncing around and running all over the place with them. Not until I, I start to build that metabolism back up, because I'm guessing that you probably have struggled with that. As far as your calorie intake, I would assume that you, for as much as you move, you probably don't eat four or 5,000 calories, which is probably what you should be eating. Yeah, I do. Um, I, I'm aware of what I eat, but I didn't know that I, how much I could eat until like the past, like four months. I think it's been like a realization of how much I have to eat to perform. So, um, yeah, I don't, I can't maintain that forever. It's just not sustainable. It doesn't, there's not a lot of time in a day and I can't spend four hours of it working out, right. you know? Yeah. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to back up Adam a hundred percent. I'd say cut the cardio out of the morning. You're still okay. going to te- you're going to teach your classes and you know just you can teach them. Here's the deal, just cuz you're teaching the classes, you're still moving. Yeah. Even if you're not doing the class mm-hmm. with the people, you're still moving. That'll count as your other activity. And then with resistance training, um, I would go maps anabolic. I wouldn't even go as, as high as maps aesthetic. I would do maps anabolic. You could do three foundational workouts a week. Stick there and then see what happens. This is one of those ca- these cases and there's I've seen this happen many times where I've had a person work out less Mm -hmm. and get leaner and get the body that they want from working out less because you're shifting the way that your body is adapting. Right now, your body's adapted to lots of work. Uh, You probably have lots of stamina, lots of endurance. Your body's minimizing muscle and strength. You're going to shift that to a more strength-focused routine. Um, Of course, make sure you eat an adequate protein diet. And then watch your body. Mm -hmm. Watch what happens to your body. You're probably already seeing some some positive effects now yeah. make that shift and then watch what happens. Yeah. The biggest hurdle f- is going to be the psychological shift uh, uh, that it's going to require for you to be able to trust that you're doing the right thing. I know uh, I've trained a lot of people in that situation where they're just constantly moving and they feel like they have to keep that momentum up. Otherwise they're going to now all of a sudden start gaining body fat like crazy. Um, but really our, our focus <laughs> and shift is, is on building muscle and building strength. And that does take uh, some time uh, to work on it. And you got to trust the process. And I'm going to add one more thing to you, Morgan, because I know you. When you're when you're getting ready and you're doing your strength training, rest, rest as long as the yeah. program tells you, yeah. or rest yeah. longer. Okay, with you, okay. The, with you, I don't think we could rest too long. Okay, right. two minutes, three minutes rest between sets if we've got the time to stretch the workout up. Because with all of my 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 group X instructors, that because you guys are so high energy, it's such a shift mentally. Like Justin is talking about, it was always so hard for me to, to settle you guys down. You know, what's yeah. next, Adam? They would be ready yeah. for the next exercise. Next, next, next. and I'm constantly, yeah. <laughs> I'm constantly having to remind them, you need to rest. We're trying to, we're trying to yeah. change that signal that Sal's talking about to your body. We need to shift it from this yeah. cardio. Be like bunny. Sal, play some Enya in your workout. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice yeah. and calm the whole time. Yeah, yeah. totally different. But <laughs> just okay. get calm. No, that's awesome. Yeah. Yep. yep. And then um, for nutrition, also, honestly, my biggest thing is I, I make sure I hit my protein every day. You know, I know how much I weigh, so I know how much I need. Um, but it kind of intuitive, I guess, like the, the intuitive eating guide is there. So I should just kind of like right now I don't plan on changing much and just trying to feel what I need. Um, yeah. Again, hoping that it doesn't cause me to gain fat or anything. But um do you have any suggestions on what I should or shouldn't do in that respect? No, you're, you're, you're doing the right thing. Don't count your calories. You know, if that's fine, track your protein. Yeah, I won't do that. Yeah, don't get, <laughs> don't, don't get stuck on counting macros and calories. Protein's fine. You can keep focusing on that. Okay. Focus on how you okay. feel. Focus on your on how you feel and how how strong you are. Yeah. If you're getting stronger, okay. you're, you're moving in the right direction. Eat, eat when you're hungry, but make good choices, right? So eat when you're, if your body is yeah. hungry and you're telling yourself, eat, but eat good and eat, make good choices. And, and also, you know, understand too, if you're building strength, you're going to build some muscle. So, you know, you might notice clothes fitting different. Don't, you know, pay attention to how Mm -hmm. you you feel. Look at yourself. Don't pay attention to the scale. You could go up a couple pounds. Don't think of it like that. Pay attention, focus on the strength and the physique that you're starting to build more than getting hung up on the weight or maybe how clothes are fitting currently and give it some time. 
Yeah. And, and truthfully, I will, I, I just went to the doctor yesterday. So that's how I know how much I weigh, but like, I don't, I'll weigh myself once a month. And I've, Good. since I started resistance training, my leggings fit better. They're filled out better. And, you know, just in general, I think, you know, I think I look a lot better. So I, you know, I was just going to keep that, but Good. yeah, I won't Good. step on the scale. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Resistance training. You guys, you definitely are uh, right with that. So thank uh, you for helping me keep that mindset when I very easily could have just stopped and not. So thank you. Awesome. No problem. All right. Well, thank you guys. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Morgan. Yeah, this just uh, this highlights the why you know the the book that I wrote is so important right now. It's like people just they they we we focus too much on exercise as being a way to burn calories, and yeah. we don't focus on the most important thing, which is how is this exercise teaching my body to adapt? How is it signaling my body to adapt? That's the most important thing you should focus on. And most people, uh, if they tell their body to build muscle and get stronger will get all the results and goals that they want and more. I, I love, though, how how open-minded she is, though. Mm -hmm. Like, the fact... I, one of the th hardest parts about training uh, my clients that were group X instructors was getting them to, to shift out. Oh, that yeah. was, God, it was like pulling teeth sometimes. Yeah. Because it, it's hard when you're in it. I don't care how, how smart you think your trainer is or who who's talking to you, to convince somebody that they're... You know, the reason why they, they they have body fat or they can't change their physique is because they're doing too much. Yeah. You're, you're burning they're too much. They're doing real work. Yeah. And, it's, and it's hard and it's they're sweating and all of this is tangible. Uh, and then to tell them that, you know, maybe that's not like promoting what your desired outcome is, is really tough to handle. Well, I mean, and what happens, what they experience is when they stop teaching as many classes, but they're not doing any resistance that's training. That's right. The they gain fat. weight. That's right. And so like, what do you mean you want me to not do right. as much? I get fat every time I do right, that. It's like, right. no, 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 we're, we're going to send a different signal yeah. while you cut back on the on that type of activity. Now That's the, what's going to make the The difference. cool part, though, man, you take somebody who's got the motivation, the discipline like a lot of Group X instructors have, and you can get them to shift oh, it. Oh, a 90-day transformation. Oh, like you, 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 can, you can build an- 180 degree. Yeah, you can build an incredible physique for someone like this if you can get them. And I, I feel like her, she's in the right place, right? She's already- Asking for that advice, she's open minded to mm -hmm. to shutting down some of that stuff. If she if she backs off of all the high intensity while she's teaching class and lays off the cardio and then just strength trains like a maps and a ball on a three day a week and eats when she's hungry and feeds herself well, she'll change that physique. Totally. Look, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides. If you like this information, you'll love our free guides. You can also find all of us on social media. You can find us on Instagram. So Justin can be found at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. I do have this dream that at some point, modern medicine, when they recommend you go exercise, they say, we want you to go do resistance strength, which by the way, can be performed with your body, can be performed with bands. Of course, you can use weights or machines. By the way, in the book, I put workouts in there as well. I actually put programs in there.